Welcome to More Than Just a Game, an analysis of the Houston Astros presented by Lori Cardoni. Let's start out by looking at what the Astros want to offer their fans. A patch of grass, an ordinary place to play, unless it's several breathtaking acres and invites the sky to watch the hometown stars as they amaze us on the ground through the air, in the stands, making memories nine innings at a time. And then, it's not just a patch of grass. It's a magic carpet ride you'll never forget. Astros baseball, more than just a game. For opening day tickets, go to astros.com. The Astros sell dreams and memories, but the game is about money, big money. The origin of Major League Baseball dates back to the formal organization of the New York Knickerbocker Baseball Club in 1842. The first admission fee, 50 cents, was charged for an all-star game between the Brooklyn and New York clubs. Baseball has been about profit ever since. Baseball and the media have had a symbiotic relationship since newspapers began regularly covering games in the 1860s. In 1897, Broadcast rights were sold for the first time. Each team received $300 in free telegram as part of the league-wide contract to transmit. In 1913, Western Union paid each team $17,000 over five years for the rights to broadcast the games. In 1910, the movie industry purchased the rights to show the highlights of the 1910 World Series. The owners raised the rights fee to $2,500 the next year. Radio and television followed. Today, annual television broadcasting contracts are in excess of $24 million per team and drives the sport's top line growth. Broadcasting and cable money in 2014 accounted for $2.88 billion, or 37% of baseball's $7.86 billion revenue. Baseball has protected itself against competition from other leagues for more than 130 years. The league lost some of its power in 1976 when it lost its monopolistic control over the players, but it retains its monopolistic hold on the number and location of franchises. Players won the right to free agency in 1972, causing the players' salaries to skyrocket. For example, the average salary went up from $45,000 in 1972 to over $2 million today. During this period, revenues increased by 1,800% from $6.4 million to $119 million primarily due to a 2,800% increase in television revenue. Ticket prices increased by 439% while attendance doubled and the league increased from 24 teams to 30 teams. Exact financial information as to the worth of the league is unavailable because the teams are privately held, but Forbes currently estimates that Major League Baseball is worth $36 billion and team values average $1.2 billion. Each of the 30 Major League Baseball teams have gone up in value by at least 20%, fueled by the stock market's six-year bull run, DVR-proof content, real estate development around stadiums, higher profitability, and the incredible success of Major League Baseball Advanced Media, the sports digital arm that is equally owned by the league's 30 teams. Major League Baseball competes with other professional sports for fans' disposable income, like football and basketball. In a market for season ticket sales and a small overlap in seasons, Many fans can't have both. Revenue sharing between Major League Baseball teams and maintaining a competitive balance is a challenge for each league team. Baseball is not as fast-paced as a basketball or football sport, and the slow pace can turn some sports fans away in favor of a quicker game with less of a time commitment. Regarding the Houston Astros specifically, the team is ranked 26th in value out of 30 teams. It is estimated to be worth $800 million, with annual revenues of $175 million. Jim Crane and a group of investors purchased the team in 2011, and it moved from the National League to the American League. 
He started with aging talent and a terrible television deal negotiated and poorly structured by the former owner Drayton McLean with Comcast Sports Network, which became the subject of bankruptcy and lawsuits. The city of Houston is a large market. It is ranked fourth in population and tenth on the list of top television markets. The Comcast deal was not as good as other teams relevant to its market size. The Astros and their partners, the Rockets and Dynamo, had to pivot quickly into a new deal that was not negotiated under the best of circumstances for the teams. Root Sports is the current television outlet jointly owned by the Astros, Rockets, and AT&T. The team has a robust farm system to develop talent and was recently ranked first by Major League Baseball. It includes affiliate teams, the Fresno Grizzlies, the Corpus Christi Hooks, the Lancaster Jethawks, the Quad Cities River Bandits, the Tri-City Valley Cats, the Greenville Astros, the Gulf Coast League Astros, and two teams in the Dominican Summer League, Astros Blue and Orange teams. Jim Crane needed to turn the Astros into a winner, and for this he tapped Jeff Lunell, who was then head of the St. Louis Cardinals scouting department, to turn around the team that had finished the season with 76 or fewer wins for six years in a row. Crane wanted a quick turnaround, and he looked to use superior data to do it. They embarked on a project unlike anything baseball had ever seen before. They would endure a couple of losing seasons and invest in the farm system, data analytics, and the baseball academies in the Dominican Republic, which Luna's staff determined was a cost-efficient source of talent. The Astros have one of the lowest payrolls in the league. The only team with a lower payroll are the Arizona Diamondbacks. The experiment the Astros embarked on seems to be succeeding, as they have made it into the postseason for the first time in 10 years in 2015. The team includes a Cy Young award-winning pitcher, Rookie of the Year, Silver Slugger Award winner, and two Golden Glove winners. The team has increased in value 51% from 2014, and attendance has increased 23% in one year. For the, cur for the Astros, who currently rank 22nd in attendance out of 30 teams in Major League Baseball, there is a lot of opportunity for growth in ticket sales. They are focusing on the demographics and segments of the Houston market to make sure they are using the proper channels to promote the team. They moved up four positions for attendance from 26th in 2014 and six positions since Jim Crane took over the team in 2011. The use of data analytics is being used throughout the organization from scouting player talent to monitoring marketing efforts and driving ticket sales. The front office includes people that you would never think would have a career in baseball. There is even an area affectionately called the Nerd Cave that is lined with whiteboards covered in algebraic formulas. Jeff Lunell has surrounded himself with people that understand and are committed to this change in business. They include engineers, consultants, data scientists, and a physicist. Lunell sa says these types of skills were not valued 10 or 15 years ago. The data you use today to make decisions wasn't available then. They examine conventional baseball wisdom. They make sure it holds up to statistical rigor and stop relying on what does not. This has led the Astros to doing things different on the diamond than the casual fan is used to seeing. They uncover overlooked talent. They use their pitchers in tandem in the minor leagues so the pitchers have more innings to show what they can do. They count things like the rotation of a pitcher's ball and find ways to improve his pitching success. They can make pitching adjustments based on where batters are hitting the ball high or low. They can also use data to prevent sports injuries. Luno boasts that the data-driven process they have devised is their greatest accomplishment and the process is difficult to imitate. It took a true commitment and investment to the change. Markets like the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees may not be able to follow because their fans won't stand for it. Lunell states, if you believe this data has predictive ability, then you are in an arms race to learn it and take advantage of it. The Astros also have an opportunity to increase their market share in Texas. 
Currently, their AAA team is in Fresno, California. Local markets like Austin and San Antonio have a large share of the desired market segment that would be hungry to go to a baseball game. The Round Rock Express, owned by Nolan Ryan, would be a good addition to the organization when their contract with the Texas Rangers ends in 2018. The Astros could also look to add or move one of their minor league teams to Austin or San Antonio to take advantage of those markets. Houston's growth rate is high. It is growing at a faster rate than the state and the nation. Household income is above the U.S. median. This indicates that there is more disposable income in this market to afford baseball tickets. The Astros can focus and capitalize on this. Men are more likely to follow baseball than women, 43% to 22%. In Houston, the male-to-female ratio is about even, so there is room to develop the female side of the market. Baseball is also appealing to fans with some college education, and the Houston area is home to over 15 universities, colleges, and medical schools. A significant portion of a Major League Baseball's revenue is from local broadcasting revenue. However, this is a competitive balance problem between Major League teams. There is a big difference between what the New York Yankees are paid by the local TV network and what the Astros earned from their broadcast contract with Root Sports. Root Sports Southwest was available at launch day to about 4 million households. It was available to less than a million as Comcast Sports Network Houston. The Rockets and Astros gave up majority ownership in the channel with the sale, but will receive their full rights fees, $107 million this year, for the first time since leaving Fox Sports Houston in the fall of 2012. CSN Houston Network shut fans out after failing to secure carriage deals with most of the region's cable satellite providers like DirecTV, Dish Network, and AT&T. The Astros owned 45.5% of the failed channel, and the Rockets owned 31%. Comcast filed bankruptcy, and DirecTV obtained the network's assets for $1,000 and $50 million in capital infusion. Over the summer of 2015, the clubs filed suit against Comcast to recover the lost $550 million in equity and more than $100 million in unpaid rights fees. Televising the games is essential to the Astros brand's success because it generates interest in the team and attendance. It is a key source of revenue to help with rebuilding the team. Another challenge occurring nationwide is the declining interest in the sport of baseball. Based on a recent Harris poll, people that follow baseball are down from 37% to 32%. Why is this happening? Some surmise it is due to the slow pace of the game. The average baseball game in 2014 was three hours and eight minutes. There are rules in place to speed up a game like the pitcher must deliver the ball no more than every 12 seconds if the bases are unoccupied. They're just not being enforced. The instant replay rule was also put in place to prevent long arguments. 80% of people polled in the Harris poll feel that this has been good for the game, and 40% of those say it has been very good change. Initial results show these measures have reduced game length by at least 10 minutes per game. Another threat to the Astros is a potential labor disagreement when the current agreement expires in 2016. Players had a history of striking every time the agreement expired. That began in 1972 and lasted through 1994. In August of 2002, that pattern was broken when the two sides agreed to a new labor contract for the first time without work stoppage. Although a strike has not occurred in 14 years, the threat still exists each time a new deal needs to be negotiated. Mike Dillon, Vice President of Marketing and Strategy, explains, the better we can understand our customers, the more successful we will be fitting them with the best product, which in this case would be the best ticket package that you can enjoy and renew for years to come. The Astros need to know their market and which target or segment is most likely to attend a baseball game. Esri, a data analytics firm in Redlands, California, broke down baseball fans into segments most likely to attend the game. The four groups are the Boomburbs, 
dormed diplomas, proximity to military, and wealthy seaboard suburbs. The boom burbs are busy, affluent young families with young children who live an upscale lifestyle. The median household income is $103,545, more than double that of the U.S. median. Most households have two incomes and two vehicles. The median age is 36. The dorm to diplomas community are focused on education. Approximately 81% are enrolled in college or graduate school. The median age is 21.9. Nearly three-fourths of employed residents work part-time in low-paying service jobs. The median family income is 23,807. Most residents rent an apartment off campus or live in dorms. The military proximity neighborhoods are comprised of people who depend upon the military for their livelihood. Most of the labor force is in the armed forces, while others work in civilian jobs on military bases. The median household income is $36,795, and the median age is 22.5. Finally, the wealthy seaboard suburbs. While not on the east or west coast seaboard, Houston has people that fit into this group based on demographics. The neighborhoods are older, established and affluent. Households are primarily married couples. Approximately half of those who are employed work in management and professions. The median household income is $98,852 and the median age is 43.2 years. The Astros are selling a winning team. They are selling H-Town pride. They are selling home run hitters. They are selling ace pitchers a championship for the city of Houston. Bring your family and friends to the Paul Park early to see Jose Altuve at batting practice. Sit in the crawfish boxes and catch a Colby Rasmus home run. The Astros are selling cherished memories with your family, your buddies, your girlfriends. Just come to the park and have fun. Each inning there is a different event. You can tweet your pictures to pound Astros happiness before the game and see if it is chosen to be on the big scoreboard in the eighth inning. Watch a small child run and steal a base under 30 seconds for a prize as the stadium cheers them on. Stand up and honor designated members of the armed forces with a standing ovation. There is never a dull moment during the game and you never know when the camera will capture you eating a hot dog or texting on your phone for all to see on the giant scoreboard. An Astros game is all about fun, and it's all about community. The Astros distribution system is both direct and indirect. You can still buy tickets directly from the box office or MLB.com, but tickets are also distributed through third-party websites and ticketing contractors like Ticketmaster. StubHub is the official resale market for the team and one of the Astros sponsors. They sponsor a seat upgrade to the Mazda Club level at every game. Purchase tickets are available digitally through My Astros Tickets to allow fans to print or transfer their assigned seats. Fans can also pay their season invoice online, purchase additional season tickets, or sell their tickets through StubHub. My Ballpark app personalizes a trip to Minute Maid Park with mobile check-in, social media, offers, rewards, and exclusive content. There are even seat upgrades available and interactive maps of Minute Maid Park. Fans are also encouraged to tweet the team and their favorite players individually, making the experience more personal. The player's Twitter handle is provided on the big screen with batting statistics as they come to the plate, and sometimes after the game, you will get tweeted back. If you can't make it to the game and don't have a TV or radio handy, you will not miss a thing. MLB.com has game day, where you can watch a simulation of each pitch and see where balls were hit in real time. MLB TV and MLB Audio streams the games live to your device as well. The MLB has broadcasting deals with ESPN and Fox Sports, but the majority of the season is broadcast locally over the jointly owned network Root Sports. The Astros use dynamic pricing. Ticket prices are adjusted based on demand. 
A game against the Texas Rangers will likely be more popular in Houston than a game against the Miami Marlins. As a result, fans are willing to pay more for a ticket simply because there are more Texas Rangers fans in Houston than Miami Marlins fans. Dynamic pricing is also an incentive to invest in season tickets. When purchasing a season ticket, fans are able to secure better pricing over the course of the season as they pay a set amount per game rather than a dynamic fee. A real life example of this is when the Yankees or Red Sox come to town. The most in-demand game of the series is Saturday afternoon. If you want to sit in a field box, the ticket will cost $127, but if you go to the Thursday game, which is less in demand, the same seat will cost $98. As the game approaches, the prices may continue to change. If they call up a prospect, like the debut of Carlos Correa, or if Dallas Keuchel is pitching, the price could climb higher. The price is determined by demand, so buying tickets early is financially wise. In 2015, the average ticket price in Minute Maid Park was $31.82, which was 13.7% higher than 2014, and slightly above the Major League Baseball average of $28.94. If you purchased your tickets before the 2015 season, you likely received a good deal because the Astros had a great season and tickets became more in demand and went up. The Astros have invested in the fan experience and have made many improvements around the ballpark. The Total Fan Cost Index, FCI, which is the cost of four non-premium seats, two beers, four sodas, four hot dogs, parking, and two adult hats, is $220.28, which is an increase of 6% over 2014. Across Major League Baseball, the Astros FCI is one of the lowest. The Astros are using data analytics to evaluate talent, but they are also using predictive data analytics to run what-if scenarios so they can convert single-game ticket buyers into season ticket holders. Once converted, they look to retain those season ticket holders. Promotions are designed to work through these steps. Season-long game specials include Keuchel's Corner, with a ticket, fans receive a fake Keuchel beard and a bright orange Keuchel t-shirt and sit in a designated section when Dallas pitches. They also plan special weekends like the Biggio Hall of Fame weekend or Star Wars weekend to celebrate Orbit the Mascot's favorite movie. Star Wars draws in fans that can come cosplayed as their favorite Star Wars character and some receive Orbit One Kenobi bobbleheads. Matt Dillon, Vice President of Marketing and Strategy for the Astros, says data-driven decision-making is at the foundation of everything the team does. Halfway through the 2013 season, Dillon's staff noticed attendance and ticket revenue for Friday night home games was falling short of projections. They discovered the casual fans were not aware of the post-game fireworks because promotions were not reaching them. The Astros re-evaluated and modified the channels they promoted, and the promotion through and were able to turn around performance. For select games, the Astros have special giveaways for the first 10,000 fans. Depending on the giveaway, fans will line up hours before game time. Giveaways in 2015 included replica Nolan Ryan rainbow jerseys, Evan Gaddis bobbleheads, Dallas Keuchel garden gnomes, and a Craig Biggio Hall of Fame t-shirt. Season ticket representatives offer private tours of Minute Maid Stadium to individuals who have purchased season tickets. These tours will allow entrance to the owner's suite, the press box, the Diamond Club restaurant, and access to the field. The tour ends by the fan enjoying a view from their amazing new seat for the season. Of course, besides the best prices of the season, season ticket holders enjoy many perks for their loyalty. If they renew, they receive five memory points per seat for the next season. These points can be used for a special fan experience, like throwing out the first pitch at a ball game, or taking five swings at the plate and receive a commemorative photo. Season ticket holders get a guaranteed option to receive postseason tickets, 
and an invitation to season ticket holder events all year long, like Astros Picture Day, where they can go on the field and meet all of their favorite players. The Astros run promotions aimed at their target segments. For example, to appeal to the Boom Burbs group, there are Family Sundays, where kids can run the bases after the game. Family four-pack of tickets are available starting at $70. Friday night fireworks take place every Friday night game during the regular season. And finally, there are Coca-Cola value days on select Monday through Thursday games where a family can purchase a ticket, popcorn, hot dog, and soda for $16 each. In May, the Astros run a college night promotion to appeal to the dorm to diploma crowd. All college students receive discounted tickets to the game, including a free pregame concert. For the military group at every home game, the Astros honor veterans and active military members with Operation Military Appreciation, presented by Occidental Petroleum. Each honoree receives complimentary tickets behind home plate and food and beverage. The honorees are introduced on Minute Maid Park's giant video board to a crowd ready to show its appreciation with a standing ovation. The Houston Astros invited 10 military members and their families to enjoy Big and Bright Friday night at each Friday home game, with On the Home Front presented by Occidental Petroleum. On the Home Front guests watch the Astros take batting practice from the field and then get to enjoy a game in great seats with a perfect view of post-game fireworks. The Astros primarily partner with local organizations serving active duty military and veterans to identify participants in these programs. Fans are able to nominate themselves or someone they know by filling out a nomination form. The Astros position their product differently for each segment. For example, a family with small children there are discounted ticket specials, and when the kids won't sit still, the Astros have built squeeze play. The kids can climb and slide in a multi-story gym, and parents can keep up with the game on TV monitors. For the wealthy suburban professional, you can entertain clients at the Diamond Club restaurant. You can sit in the comfy seats behind home plate, or remain in the restaurant and watch the game as it is projected onto the wall. Private suites are available as well, and the Asperity Club is one of Minute Maid Park's newest premium seating areas, featuring a premier vantage point directly behind home plate. In an area previously reserved for members of the media, this smartly appointed club is located in one of the most highly coveted areas in the ballpark. Fans will experience the batter's view of the action while enjoying first-class dining and amenities. For the collector, Astra's memorabilia is available at the team store. One can buy anything from a commemorative Minute Maid Park brick to Astra's apparel to game used and autographed balls and bats. If you want to deck out your home or office in Astro's trademark products, all matter of product choices are available from Astru Astro's tissue box covers, keyboards, and soap dispensers. While the Rockets and Texans can offer similar experiences for their fans, there are differences. First, the sports are different, and each appeals to a sports fan in a different way. The seasons are staggered, and there is a small overlap at the beginning and end of each sports season between the three sports. All three compete for Houston sports fans' disposable income. The Astros are able to offer a first-class experience for less, if you are a season ticket holder, this, they promote value. The premium seats in the Astros Mazda club level are $52 a game. The Rockets or Texans do not have as many games and the price of their club seats is much more expensive. Club seats at the Rockets games include parking at the Tundra Garage located next to the stadium that can run a fan close to $300 per seat. Like the Astros, the Texans club seats enjoy their own level with a massive lounge and upgraded seating, but the seats are highly in demand, they have a waiting list, and cost over $200 a seat. The sports team's logos also convey a different message. The Astro Astros logo is retro, traditional, 
anchoring it in the past, which is interesting in that they are very much racing into the future with their use of data and computers to build their organization. In contrast, the rocket's logo is very modern, depicting the space age, a team that is blasting off to a championship, perhaps? The Texans logo is strong visually, and it alludes to their Texas name via the flag elements. The Astros' biggest difference from all of the other professional sports teams and what makes, makes their story fascinating is their mastery of the data in all aspects of the organization, from talent acquisition to sports injury prevention to marketing. The Astros are committed to taking the Oakland A's money ball approach to the extreme. Ray Ebert, Senior Director of Information Technology for the Houston Astros and pictured tossing the baseball, previously worked for the San Diego Padres. He says this about the new way of doing business. The best part of the approach is that it changes the dialogue between the business analysts and the IT staff. In the past, all people ever wanted from us was to keep the website up and running and email available. Now we are getting into the nuts and bolts of the business. The use of data analytics helps the Astros to segment customers to better understand the differences among fans while placing an emphasis on the lifetime value of customers. Starting off with ticket sales also led the team to a better understanding of other aspects of the business, including marketing, corporate partnerships, concessions, and merchandise. Since the Astros are redeveloping the Houston baseball market, the use of data assists them in making some accurate business decisions and being able to compete with clubs that have many more resources and loads of revenue at their disposal. Thank you for listening, and go Stros! The following sources were used for this presentation.